Hello everyone, welcome to the first episode of the Shark Video podcast. Uh, my name is Dan Abbott. Uh, my name's Ollie Putnam. And this week we're going to be talking about Shark Week, uh, which has um, been filmed, or parts of it have been filmed in Mossel Bay, which is a place in South Africa which me and Ollie know quite well. Uh, we we'll do. also be looking at a photo that was taken there uh, by a guy called Andy Casagrande, who's a um, video Photographer, photographer, and does a lot of filming for Discovery and Shark Week. Uh, we'll also compare our own shark photos uh, with Andy's photo, and uh, we'll have a look at some new gear as well uh, that we've uh, both kind of been looking at, and uh, some of us have been purchasing. Uh, so uh, let's go straight to it. Ollie, did you hear about um, the uh, Shark Week being filmed in Muscle Bay? I did, yes. And uh, like you said, we know Muscle Bay quite well. Both both been there a few times uh, working with the great white sharks, mm -hmm. um, so it's uh, home from home for us. So yeah. we're always interested in what's happening there, and super excited that uh, Shark Week uh, or one of the Shark Week programs has been being filmed there. It feels like this has gone a bit crazy on the internet. Everywhere I look now is people talking about Michael Phelps, uh, yeah. the most successful Olympian of all time, uh, racing a great white shark it's even on the bbc news page which you know is when it's serious it is yeah we've been having a look at that uh, i was just reading the article earlier actually and uh yeah very interesting but uh so can you uh could you tell us dan what uh what it is that's meant to be happening on that on that program well apparently he's racing a shark i mean that's pretty much all the information they've they've given i think a lot yeah. of, a lot of the comments that i've seen though have been um kind of criticizing that <laughs> you shouldn't be getting into the water racing a shark and i think if people are expecting that they're probably going to be quite disappointed to be honest yeah That's... i think people are taking it a little bit too too literally um i mean we know that uh, discovery channel and, and shark week uh, they always get a, a little bit dramatic with things uh, maybe a little bit over the top but uh, i don't think they'd go quite as far as actually having having him in the water with a great white yeah of course, the other bit of information uh, that we have is that we know it's already been filmed. It's not the case that uh, this is what he's going to be doing in the future. He's already yes. done it and he's fine. Yep. So he has already done it. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, we can confirm he's, he's, <laughs> he's, he's still alive, alive and well. So. <laughs> yeah. It's quite an interesting concept though. I, obviously, it's probably not too difficult to work out which is going to be the fastest considering white sharks can get to about probably 20 or 25 miles an hour. And yeah. I think they got Michael Phelps' top speed is about six miles an hour. So that's kind of solved that mystery already. Yeah. I mean, uh, we're looking at looking at this and looking at people's comments on there. And as we were saying before, everyone's been quite critical of it. But uh, I think it's uh, it's going to be quite interesting. Uh, yeah. they'll, they'll, they'll make it interesting enough for, for everybody, even if he's not directly in the water. With yeah, shark. Of course, we don't really get Shark Week in such a big way over here in the UK as they do. No, not not so much um, over in the US. You, you guys over in the US uh, get it a lot more than us. Um, it's, I mean, it's growing here in the last few years. You know, watch as much of it as as we can. Um, sometimes we have to uh, actually find it online though. Afterwards, <laughs> I'm not sure there's quite as much of it is showed here. Yeah. So. Yeah. And coming out of Mossel Bay a few days ago, there was quite an impressive photo, which uh, was taken by Andy Casagrande, who's been doing a lot of the filming there. Yes. Um, of a great yeah. white shark breaching, but it's quite a unique photo, partly because of how it's framed and that it's not the shark filling the frame like you expect most breaching photos to be. It's kind of the shark is at one side almost with the sun on the, yeah, on the other side. Yeah, almost part of the, part of the landscape, but... Uh... A feature in itself mm. so yeah i mean we've uh we've taken some photos ourselves never never quite quite this good um it's quite an interesting angle as well uh, yeah it is like you say it's um you don't often see them that way usually if you're if you're towing a decoy they'll quite often almost be facing you when when they come up um but uh, this one seems to be coming in from the side almost. So I wonder if they had another boat towing the decoy and he was 
kind of alongside it. With they might have been, yeah, yeah. Uh, this was sort of because you can see it's kind of come up almost from directly behind the decoy. The way the the tail is still hanging in the water, it has. Yeah, maybe maybe next time we're there, Dan, we need two boats. We weren't lucky <laughs> enough to have two boats last, last time. That's where we're going we? wrong. That's where we're going wrong. You can also about this photo. Sorry, I love this photo. You can yeah. actually see um, just about over on the on the left. You can see um, the silhouette of a ship underneath yes, the sun. Yes, you um, can. That's, again, and you a just great, spotted that. Yeah, a great reminder, I think, of just how um, this bay, Mossel Bay, is still such a, a working industry, and the sharks yeah. are still there doing their thing. I find it quite. It's quite amazing. Yeah, they don't see. It doesn't seem to put them off. Um, as I say, there's there's quite often ships there. There's a there's a I think it's an oil there's an oil refinery or petroleum plant or something just mm -hmm. uh, just on shore there. So there's quite often big ships coming into the area. And I think last time we were there, there was even a, a decommissioned uh, platform, oil platform, That's which right. was towed in. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. So but, how, do, uh, how do your how do your photos compare with this one? Well, I've got one that's uh, I've got one that I took last time. Well, I've got a couple I took last time. First one uh, we'll have a look at probably is is my favourite one, um, and that's uh, a, a shot of the of a great white. Again, we were, we were towing a seal decoy, and it's pretty much completely out of the water, air jaws style. Mm. Um, so that, that that's is a one decoy, of my, isn't it? Uh, that's not a real seal. Yes, that is a, a sealed decoy. Just a uh, it was a cut up neoprene wetsuit, wasn't it? In the yeah. shape of a seal. Um. So yeah, no no seals were harmed in the in the yeah. making of this of this photo. And just how long <laughs> did you have to sit on the back of the boat with your camera that pointing was at the decoy? Ages, ages down we sat there because that I doesn't think, look like um, it's at dawn or anything. That looks like it's daytime. <laughs> Yeah, well, for for people that that don't know much about uh, towing seal decoys uh, to get great whites to breach, you usually do it uh, first thing in the morning at uh, sunrise or last thing at night sunset. Uh, these are the best times and when the, the great whites are out hunting and most active. Um, it's all to do with the the light, the the, the seals with the light being quite low uh, above the sea, the seals aren't able to spot the sharks um, stalking them as easily. So the sharks uh, seem to like this time. Yeah, um, it's, but it's, yes. I mean, just touching on that, it's actually amazing how you'll see a group of seals in the middle of the day, which, yeah. and, and they don't even get bothered at all. It, it really does. No. It really does work so well for the sharks, this kind of camouflage thing at dawn and dusk, so much so that they don't even bother during the day. Yeah. Yeah, there are a lot more sedate in the day. Um, you'll often see we've been when we've been on the boat. You've seen you know seals quite close to the boats uh, while the sharks are around, um, and they're obviously uh, you know they're obviously conscious the sharks are there, but they uh, maybe a bit more relaxed than they than they would be first thing in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> so what uh, what so, other photos are you, are you uh, kind of proud of that you took when you were there? Um, well, as we were saying, this this one was a little bit little bit later on uh, in the morning. We'd been sat there quite a while for this photo, but the other one uh, that I'd got uh, was actually just just at sunrise, um, and nice nice red and orange sky there. Mm. Ship in the background, just like uh, You've got to have the ship. Uh, Andy Brandy's uh, <laughs> photo. Um, maybe not as high quality as his, but. It's mine, so that's why I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually, I recognise that photo. I'll tell you why. Um, yeah. I think I am in a photo like that. <laughs> that might actually be that same breach. Um, right, okay. There is a photo of me. I'm just trying to find it now. There's a photo of me um, basically looking out, and I think it's the same breach uh, where you've got the, the sun in the background and the, the angle of it. Um, I wasn't. Oh, I yeah. wasn't taking photos or anything. I was basically just kind of standing on the back of the boat, uh, waiting for the sharks to do its thing. But I think someone behind right. me had a photo. I think it might yep. have been our friend Elton. I, I can't remember what camera he was using. Shout but, out to um, Elton Polly. Yeah, 
But uh, he was, uh, yeah, he managed to snap a photo of me looking at the breach, which was kind of cool, I thought, in the end. Although my, head, quite, is, is, my head is blocking out the sun. <laughs> well, that's, that's almost a good thing. It might have uh, got the picture to come out a little bit better. Uh, yeah, possibly. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the same breach. I think a lot of our friends so. have, have a similar photo as well, don't they? Of, uh, yeah, yeah. There's a few of us on the on the boat that morning, so uh, I think uh, a few of us, yeah, will have a very similar photo. Everyone that everyone that managed to catch it, that is. Yes. So, <laughs> because uh, that's the thing, you, you sit there for so long uh, towing, uh, sit there so long on the boat towing this decoy behind you, just just waiting and waiting, waiting, hoping uh, a shark will breach on the decoy, and. Uh, if you are ready, you, you look uh, away for one minute. <laughs> oh goodness, yeah, the ones the ones we missed when we looked away for a second. Yeah, yeah, but uh, no, we we still got a few pictures. So, so changing yeah. the subject slightly. Um, yeah. The other day, I <clears throat> was scrolling through my Instagram. I think it was, and yeah, I there was an advert that popped up, and it was for a drone. Um, called an Elfie. Have you heard of an Elfie? I have. Yeah. Yeah. I've I've heard of them. Yeah. So basically, it's this um, like pocket drone, which is um, for people that um, just kind of want to take selfies, really. But it it yep. worked out to be about between like thirty and fifty pounds. Uh, right. Which um, is incredibly cheap when it comes to drones. So it I was, is. Yeah. I was doing a bit of research um, and thought, well. That's kind of cool, but maybe I maybe I should get a drone that is a bit better quality. So I was doing a bit of browsing and found a few that were kind of a bit better quality, and uh, yeah. the stabilization was a bit better, and obviously the price is going up. And I basically yeah. spent the whole morning looking at <laughs> drones, <laughs> and then eventually decided on the one that I wanted would be the one that is much more expensive than the Elfie <laughs> um, yeah. and takes much better video, video quality. But you've just bought that drone, uh, haven't you? Um, the Mavic, yes, yeah. is the drone I've just bought. Um, Tell me about the it, Mavic. Oh, I've had it a couple of months now. Absolutely love it. Um, for for years and years, I've been, well, ever since I've you know become popular, I've been wanting to get one, wanting to get one. Never quite got around to it. And then... Uh, middle to end of last year dji i bought out the the mavic um which pretty much fitted everything i wanted uh for a drone um in that it's foldable um it folds down really really small uh, so you can almost fit it in a pocket it have to be quite a large pocket but uh, definitely easily fit in your in your camera bag uh with your other camera gear um and yeah, it means you don't have to, the, the, the DJI Phantoms, uh, which were the sort of, um, not top of the line ones, but they were the most, uh, most popular before that you had to have another box for one and, uh, you know, it's an extra thing to carry around. This one just folds up and take it with you wherever, wherever you want to go. So what's the difference in quality um, between the Phantom and the Malik? Well, I mean, there's different, a few different levels of the Phantom. Um, they're now up to well, they're up to the Phantom Four, but there's the the Phantom Four and the Phantom Four Pro, uh, and uh, so the Mavic is is up there with them. I don't think the camera is quite as good as the Phantom Four Pro, um, but it is still a very very good camera, very good picture. Um, does you know 4K video, which is it's quite important for for uh, drones, I think, because they're obviously very very wide shots, and if you ever want to to crop in. Uh, slightly, you know, it's useful to have that that extra re resolution. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as I said, I'm really really happy with it, and uh, does absolutely everything I need from it from a drone. Uh, uh, DJI uh, have just brought out something else, haven't they? They've just brought out a, a more a more recent yes, drone, uh, DJI Spark, I think it's okay. called. Yeah, so which is does, more more the size from? of that. More the size of that Elfie uh, drone that you were looking at. Right. Um, it's a little bit smaller, smaller than the Mavic. Um, I don't think it folds, but it's it's so small that you can literally fit it in your pocket. Mm. Uh, and that's again probably like the Elfie is is aimed more at people 
who just want something in their pocket to put up in the air quickly to take a, a picture of themselves or um, or just to do a little video, you know, following them along or something like that. Yeah. Um, and it's really, really well put together and automated and, and has a, a good camera as well. Um, it doesn't do 4K, I don't think, like the like the Mavic and the Phantoms, um, but still a very good good image. So yeah, probably just for a, a slightly different slightly different market than the than the Mavics and the sure. Phantoms. And having GoPro released so, one as well. Uh, they did last year. It was a bit of a flop though. I think the the GoPro Karma, um, and they they went a slightly different route to to DJI in that they made the uh, the gimbal uh, removable from the drone. Okay. And you could then use it as a, uh, you know, handheld gimbal. You use your the GoPro. It's designed to use the uh, Hero Five. Okay. Um, so it was slightly different. It was, I think, it was a re- release around the same time as the Mavic. Um, it was a little bit bigger than the Mavic, but had different features. Um, but unfortunately, I think it was a bit of a, a bit of a flop. Um, they were having problems with them falling out of the sky. And oh, no. uh, I think <laughs> they you for a drone. all. I think I think they were all recalled actually, wow. um, but uh, which was a bit of a, a bit of a fail for GoPro. Yeah, I mean to be fair, it was their first one, and trying to compete with DJI, who are the you know the leaders in in that field, they were always going to have a hard time. But uh, I think they've re released it now. The the Karma, um, as of about March April this year. So. We'll speaking see, of see how that... speaking of GoPros, yeah, um, you've you've used GoPro for years, haven't you? Um, yes, but you've just well, got my f- you've just got something else to replace yeah. it. Yeah, well, one of my yeah one of my first cameras uh, for underwater use was a, was a GoPro, probably very similar to a lot of people, um, and I had a I think it was a three plus black at the time. Uh, I've still got it now. Still use it for for various different things. Great camera, um, but yeah, I've because I've been getting other gear, um, you know, slightly more serious gear than than GoPros more recently. Um, I wanted something to actually match with the gear that I'm using, and I've got a big Sony camera, um, underwater video camera. So I've actually gone for a Sony action cam uh, to use alongside that as sort of a a second camera and a few reasons why. Um, The first one obviously with them both being Sony cameras, they uh, film a very similar image and in the same uh, type of codec uh, and file type. So they're very easy to to, uh, put together if you're editing a video from multiple cameras. you know, without so you don't have completely different picture profiles or anything. Uh, and the other big, uh, big draw of that camera is that it actually has optical uh, image stabilization, um, whereas the GoPros only have uh, digital image stabilization. Right. So optical is uh, is a lot better. It, the digital image stabilization on the GoPros actually crops the image slightly and then moves that image sort of around whilst focusing on a. Uh, a center point so you lose a little bit of the of the quality right so yeah that led me to uh, to choose the the sony um and what kind of price is that that uh i think that was around around 450 pounds uh okay. english pounds um which is slightly more than the than the GoPro yeah, Five, not too much. Which I think is around. I think it's around three fifty, four hundred. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, but it comes with it comes with a screen which is actually removable, and you can mount it on different things. So you can actually mount it on a on a wrist strap or something, um, or mount it, you know, facing you on uh, a a stick or uh, a tripod, so you can actually see what you're what you're recording as yeah. you would with a uh, you know a video camera with a, a flip round LCD screen uh, so that's quite useful um, and then it has all you know very similar mounts to GoPros you know you can mount it in almost any place you want to it also has uh, it comes with a underwater housing 
um, which is possibly why it's a little bit more than the than the GoPro. The GoPro 5, uh, you have to get a separate uh, underwater or uh, a dive a separate dive housing at least for the GoPro. Right, uh, it is it's uh, it's waterproof down to I think five meters or something like that. Uh, so it's you know good enough for snorkeling. But if you want to actually dive with it and take it slightly deeper. Uh, you then need, I think it's another yeah, fifty pounds for the for the housing. similar so. to the GoPro Five, isn't it? You can take that one down without a housing for. Uh, yes, yeah. So I was, I was meaning the, I was meaning the the GoPro Hero Five. Yeah, oh. that's the the Sony. I think is splash proof. I don't think it's completely waterproof okay, without so the housing. The yeah, so for both of them, you really need for for diving, you know, deeper than five meters. You you'd need a housing for yeah. for both of them. So. But yeah, no, quite happy with that overall. So, and how about you, Dan? Have you uh, have you been getting any new gear recently? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you actually have the you have the Hero Five, don't you? Yeah, I've had the Five since uh, January. Yeah. Um, and I used it quite a bit um, for a week in Egypt and um, in the Red yeah. Sea, which was which was good. Uh, quite impre yeah. I'm impressed with the quality. If you've got good light. And, um, yeah, I was I was impressed by by what you were getting from it in Egypt, and yeah. com even when we were comparing the the quality of that to to my bigger camera, and we were yeah yeah for I mean, the majority it, of the time it's uh, it's not bad. <laughs> no, pretty yeah, pretty good for such a small camera. And yeah. surprisingly, the audio isn't a disaster either. Uh, you no, can, you can plug in an external microphone, which um, uh, just takes another adapter. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's. it's it's a, it's a really good camera. It films 4K yep. as well, which for a GoPro yep. is, uh, you know, maybe, maybe it's not necessary, but it's kind of nice. Um, yeah. And then, yeah it's, yeah, yeah, it's pretty decent. But you're right, I have bought um, another camera now, <laughs> um, which yeah. is the Panasonic GH, GH5, uh, which came Fantastic. out in March. Yep. And on Monday, depending on when you're, when you're watching this, um, on Monday... Uh, I'll be buying the housing for it uh, from Nauticam, um with a, a different lens and a wide angle port as well. Exciting, so exciting maybe, stuff. Maybe I'll be able to review that on the next episode. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you can how many, uh, watch me opening how many... up my wallet and losing all my money. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, how many limbs have you uh, yeah. sold? I won't be eating for the next few months. To that? <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's an expensive hobby. It is. <laughs> it's it is. Uh, an expensive pastime. But uh, yeah, but, uh, but, yeah. We'll see how it goes. It's uh, yeah, quite, quite excited. Yeah, cool. we'll be interested to to have a look at that once you've got it, and yeah, we can tell Absolutely. everyone tell everyone about it on the podcast, and maybe show some show some pictures. Yep, and find out what you think about it. Yep, I'm sure there'll be uh, a few people who are interested in the GH5 with it having just come out, and the GH4 before it obviously was very popular. Yeah, um, the, the GH5 feels like it's geared towards people that are video people as opposed to stills yeah. um yeah. it does shoot stills up to 6k uh, in fact but yeah. um yeah just the modifications to the gh5 from the gh4 feels like it's this is the one that's geared for for video people so that yeah. was the reason i got it and also you can get a housing for it and that was yeah the most important thing really there's no point having yeah. a really nice camera if you can't take it underwater that's very true so yeah yeah, we'll uh, we'll do a review of yours and of mine uh, in uh, another episode, I'm sure. Hope you've all uh, enjoyed uh, watching at home. And if you do have any yeah. questions, uh, leave them in the comments below or find us on social media. We'll put the links to everything that we've been talking about uh, in the description uh, on this video. And we'll see Very you well. guys on the next episode. Mm -hmm.